Safety is a way of life. Our company's equipment and procedures were designed with safety as a basic requirement. Safety has two aims, to avoid injury to people and to avoid damage to equipment. In AC motors, several items of equipment help to promote safety, although, of course, no equipment can replace the good judgment and safe practices of the people who operate the motors. Safety equipment for large motors includes thermal overload relays. An overload relay is designed to break the power circuit to a motor before the temperature rises so high as to damage the motor. The temperature is most likely to rise excessively during startup of the motor. Other likely times are when the motor tries to produce more horsepower than it was designed for, and when line voltage drops excessively. A thermal overload relay should, and usually does, protect the motor against both overload and undervoltage. But do not rely upon the device completely. Motors are still frequently damaged from both these causes. When a thermal overload relay does not trip the motor out soon enough, an abused motor's windings suffer. In most cases, a tripped overload relay must be reset before the motor can again be restarted. Undervoltage protection is provided not only by the thermal overload relay, but also by the magnetic starter. In what is generally called low voltage protection, the contacts of the magnetic starter open when power fails or the voltage drops too low, and remain open until the start button is pressed. In low voltage release protection, power failure or low voltage stops the motor, but it starts again as soon as power is back to normal. For safety, you must know about any such motors on your units. The primary function of a fuse or circuit breaker is to protect motor windings and wiring against damage from short circuits. The fuse blows or the breaker trips immediately in case of a great electrical overload, such as occurs in a short circuit. A built-in time delay keeps the device from acting immediately in such overloads as normally occur during startup. It does act if the overload is prolonged, thus serving as a backup for the thermal overload relay. The operator of an AC motor may not think of the motor enclosure or housing as a safety device. It is, though. Motor enclosures vary in design, as required for safety in their services and locations. Broad classifications of enclosures are open and totally enclosed. An open motor has a housing, but it is designed to allow outside air to be drawn in and to come into direct contact with the motor's internal parts. Most open types are drip-proof or splash-proof. Drip-proof types have ventilating openings so constructed that the motor can operate successfully when drops of liquid or solid particles strike or enter the enclosure at any angle from the vertical to 15 degrees downward. Splash-proof motors are similarly constructed, except that the angle of protection extends to 100 degrees from the vertical. Totally enclosed motors include several types, non-ventilated, fan-cooled, explosion-proof, externally ventilated, waterproof, and heat exchanger. We will discuss only the explosion-proof housing. Information on other types may be found in publications of the National Electrical Manufacturers Association. An explosion-proof motor prevents explosions outside the motor and withstands explosions inside the motor. Explosion-proof motors are designed for three classes of hazardous locations, with two divisions in each class, and for several specific groups of gases, vapors, and dusts. An explosion-proof motor has two housings, or casings. The joints of the inner casing are fitted metal to metal with long rabbit overlaps. If an explosion occurs inside the motor, 
the hot gases are cooled below the ignition point before they reach the outside of the motor. The cooled gases cannot ignite flammable vapors in the atmosphere. Explosion-proof motors carry a plate or label certified by Underwriters Laboratories Incorporated. Motor frame grounding is for the protection of the operator. If insulation breaks down, or if a current carrying part touches an ungrounded frame, the operator can receive a shock, can even be electrocuted from touching the motor. When a motor is sent to the shop for repairs, the ground wire must be disconnected. Be sure that it is again connected when the motor is reinstalled. Turn to your workbook now and complete exercise number eight. If you have any questions, ask your instructor. Unusually large or especially important motors are often equipped with sensing probes and alarms installed in the control room. An alarm may be visible or audible or both. An alarm signal indicates an emergency. Learn your unit and its emergency procedures so thoroughly that you know what to do in case of any alarm signal. This motor has several alarm connections. If vibration were to become excessive, the condition would be signaled both visibly and audibly in the unit control room. Excessively high winding temperatures would be signaled in the same manner. Sensing probes would also detect excessive bearing temperatures and send alarm signals to the control room. If the motor were to begin drawing excessive electrical current, the alarm signal would be high amps, a sure sign of electrical overload probably caused by a process overload. On some alarm panels, wording is different. Another unit, for example, has this motor, which also has an overload alarm. On the alarm panel, the words describing the condition are motor overload. No equipment is truly foolproof. The best safety devices may not protect you from injury or your equipment from damage if your work procedures are unsafe. Because of local plant variations in equipment and procedures, we cannot include detailed procedures in this training module. Learn your own unit's procedures from your operating manual or other written source during your on-the-job training. Work on an electrical motor or electrical circuits can be dangerous, even fatal, if not done properly. Be sure to follow your plant's tag-out, lock-out procedures and work permit system. Work on driven equipment can also be dangerous if done improperly although there is less chance of electrical shock. Your plant's tag-out, lock-out procedures and permit system may be a little different for work on driven equipment. Your tag-out, lock-out procedures provide for cutting off electricity and keeping it off until the work is done. Not following them is an unsafe act. Limiting the frequency of starting an electric motor is a safe procedure designed to protect the motor from damage or destruction. Earlier we discussed the heat production of electric motors in general and this one as a specific example. During startup it produces heat as rapidly as this process furnace. Normal intervals between starts allow a motor's ventilation and cooling system to remove the excess heat. Starting the motor too often, without enough normal running time between starts to cool it down, builds the heat up to a dangerous level. It may burn up the motor's rotor and windings. Earlier we discussed general limitations on the frequency of starting motors. These are repeated in your workbook, but remember that your unit procedures may be more restrictive. Remember too that bumping, Plugging and inching motors are equivalent to very frequent starting. Now open your workbook and complete exercise number nine. If you have any questions, ask your instructor.